Good day. I am Gerard Milstreu, leader of the Tarnum Rock Art Museum, which also is a center for research and education. I will give you a short introduction to Scandinavian rock art with connection to the Mediterranean. Scandinavia and the Alps were covered with two, three kilometer ice, which about 13,000 years ago melted. During the post-glacial rebound, the sea retreated in Scandinavia, the difference between in the last 4,000 years is about 17 meters. The gletscher polished all rock surfaces and prepared them for making rock art. This is illustrating the extremely geological change. In connect connection with building a highway, a whale was found in clay and 72 meters above current sea level. The age of the whale was about 14,000 years old. At that time, the water depth was about 90 meters above this spot. On the picture left, you have the sea level here, and you are standing here, and there are still 90 meters water for the whale. Balcamonica, the Alps, one of the valleys created by the ice and how it looks today and the rock carvings were made uh, on the lower part of the mountains in the both part of the well valley. And the polished surface, which was a base for Ten of thousands of beautiful carvings. This is an overview over the prehistoric times. In Scandinavia, we don't have Paleolithicum, but Mesolithicum, we have a rich representation of rock art in Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and Finland. The presentation will focus on the Bronze Age. Scandinavian Bronze Age uh, between 1700 BC and zero. Influence from the Middle East culture in Europe changed from hunting, gathering to farming, also called the biggest revolution in the history of mankind ever. The change arrived in Scandinavia for about six thousand years ago. The Scandinavian countries consist of Denmark, Sweden, Norway, and Finland. And I will give a court introduction to the rock carvings in the different countries. The small stone uh, upper left corner, you can see the hand, how big it is, have a male figure on one side, two boats on another side, and two uh, footprints and some cup marks on the third side. This is a boulder about two meters high, containing five ships, three crossing circles, and uh, 250, about 250 cup marks. And this is a cupstone from a megalithic grave with two boats and uh, rock and uh, cup marks and another uh, grave from the uh, southern part of Denmark. On the right side, we are on Bornholm and you can see the largest panel uh, in Denmark contained boats, crossing circles, cup marks, footprints, as common symbols uh, on Danish rock art. Norway has a huge representation from Mesolithicum, 
the upper pictures are from Alta, which also is a uh, uh, World Heritage uh, area, showing the common motives, elks, reindeers, uh, fish hunting scenes, many of the rock carvings in Alta World Heritage are painted with red color. But there's an ongoing discussion. Do we really have to paint the carvings? We can take it later on in the presentation. Another part of uh, Norway, there are some of the very many geometric uh, figures which we cannot uh, interpret. And Bronze Age carvings in Norway. This is the southern part of Norway, a huge uh, panel with uh, boats and from another part of Norway, more boats and uh, overview of farming images. You can see animals, you have chariots, uh, sun symbols, footprints, and so on. Rock art was connected to the sea in the Bronze Age. Sweden has also a rich representation from Mesoliticum. We are on the famous site Nymphorsen in the middle of Sweden. And also here we see a lot of animals primarily elks, reindeers, uh, fishing scenes, boats with elk uh, heads in the stem. It was an important icon uh, in uh, this uh, culture. And the Bronze Age carvings in Sweden Sweden is well known for the tall male figures, a range of 50 to 235 centimeters. The male figures are well armed with swords, axes, spears, and they are phallic, a symbol of fertility. And the left picture is one of the very beautiful and famous panels in Tarnum World Heritage, about 50 square meters and showing all the common uh, images you can find on uh, Bronze Age rock art. A lot of boats, human being, beings in action with axes, swords and so on, different animals plowing scenes, and also what we are calling a sun symbol, surrounded by some figures and two women. There are also panels which is not painted, and uh, it's a most beautiful way to experience rock art. Uh, I think by sunset, the last sunbeams is developing the images. And last, Finland, rock art paintings connected to lakes. There are about 600,000 lakes in Finland. Some 11,000 years ago, the country was free of ice and soon after, that the first humans, Mesolithic hunter and gatherers arrived in this region. And we see again the common uh, animals, elks, reindeer, hunting scenes, some humans are painted on uh, the surfaces of uh, many, many rocks connected to the seas. Scandinavia were covered with two, three kilometer thick ice, which melted about 13,000 years ago. During this post-glacial rebound, the sea retreated, and on the picture uh, on the left, 
which is about the situation about 3,000 years ago. You can see the many fjords, valleys with water, and the red dots are symbols for rock art sites. They were close connected, most of them were close connected to the sea. This site fossum, we look at it later on, uh, and this is the museum. So at that time you could go by boat and visit us. On the right side is the situation today, and all the water, the fjords, the sea has uh, disappeared, so to say. And now you see rivers in the old fjords. And this is how it looks today. This is the old shoreline, and this is the fjord. There you have the museum again, and the fossil panel, which you can see here. And on the right side, how people live today. This is a fossil panel representing all, almost all the images you can find on bronze art carvings. A lot of boats, one of the 7,000 boats in Sweden, humans, mostly men in action, different kind, and one single woman, hunting scenes, dancing scenes, the three guys there and the one there could be part of some uh, ceremonial activities and footprints and the sun again, surrounded by symbols, symbols which could be adherents. It's painted with red color and you could get the impression this picture has been made uh, overnight, but it's not uh, the case. We can date several of the pictures and the first pictures could be dated to the beginning of the Bronze Age, early Bronze Age and the last in late Bronze Age. That means there's a span of years uh, or about thousand years between the first and the last picture. And this is a very common situation uh, for uh, many uh, panels uh, in uh, Scandinavia. Dating and interpretation. Scandinavia has a huge collection of bronze artifacts which can be dated. And if you compare the boat on the sword, which you can see there and there, you can immediately see it's the same style and shape as we can find on the rocks. The boat has stems inward, a keel extension here, and a lot of small strokes, so-called so crew strokes, symbols for uh, men in the boat. And it's exactly the same here on a night photography and on the robbing. Scandinavia Bronze Age rock art represents a unique Nordic contribution to world prehistoric culture. And more than 17 thousand localities are known in Sweden, about 10,000 in Norway and 4,000 in Denmark. The most common symbol, except from cup marks, is the ship represented during the whole Bronze Age and Iron Age from 700 BC to zero. This means that it must have been a very important symbol. The history of research clearly shows the importance of the ship and has concluded that it probably depicts a strong society based on maritime mobility. We are claiming they were the very first Vikings. The research aspects of 
several European Union projects, among other projects, has contributed to the recognition of the information value of the pictures and has resulted in an increasing interest in using the pictures as source material on an equal footing with objects and texts in the attempt to gain the deeper insight into prehistoric times, particularly the Bronze Age. The rock carvings are increasingly being used to understand both the religious and the worldly aspects of prehistoric societies, a beginning change in research tradition which tends towards seeing pictures and objects as equally important in archaeological research. And here I have chosen 11 of the tens of thousands of boats in Scandinavia. 11 masterpieces. The ship was a place for ceremonial activities. Here you can see uh, different uh, males, probably one woman uh, acting, dancing. As here, for example, the sun is on board. The sun is on board. So this was a place for ceremonial activities. Diagram showing the chronological, typological development of Nordic Bronze Age renderings. The left column, datable ships on Bronze artifacts. Right column, ships on the rocks, which can be dated by uh, analogy with the ships on Bronze's left. Here we have the sword, which we all, uh, already know from the beginning of the Bronze Age and late Bronze Age, Bronze Age a razor with uh, another updated, so to say, iconography. This is a boat. And here, some of the very many razors uh, we have found, uh, primarily in Denmark, showing uh, boats that shape, they are shaped as a boat, and on it is another boat here with horse head stem and the sun horse is on board and this is the symbol for the sun. So this is uh, not rock art but metal art and very important for dating rock art. Ship chronology. This overview shows a typological significance in time and style in whole Scandinavia. This is early Bronze Age, 1600s in Norway, Sweden and Denmark. This is late Bronze Age in the same countries. And now here we are in pre-Roman Iron Age. And look at the boats, they are quite different as the boats in the Bronze Age. There are no uh, activities, so we have arrived a new uh, air, part of the prehistoric uh, in Scandinavia. It is well known that panels have been in use from Mesolithicum in the whole Bronze Age and the pre-Roman Iron Age, and some probably many even into Christian times. In all probability, the rock carvings could have kept some of their old holy values. The place was of great importance and the images icons too. Therefore, picturing new symbols and supplying older symbols had to be a part of the tradition. Or with other words, the rock carvings reflect a continuity of activity and the alterations demonstrate respect for the old carvings and for the place. Here in the right column, the upper build is an elk from Mesolithicum in uh, Valcamonica, Italy. And about 10,000 years later, we have this image from the Iron Age. It's a horse, uh, the warrior with different kinds of weapons. And this is a cross, the Christian cross. 
and in this church in Denmark, but you can find it also in uh, Italy, they have recycled, reused a boulder with uh, uh, holy uh, symbols from the Bronx Age, just in case they couldn't know if the new religion could give them the same as the old. This is my own theory, so to say. Rock carvings were different kind of tools, with different kind of tools corresponding to findings. We have uh, looked at uh, the bronze artifacts, the axes are very common on uh, rock art. This axe, for example, is made of clay covered with a thin layer of bronze. That means it was worthless as weapon or working tool. It has a position in the ceremonial and rituals which were carried out in the boats. Here, two men, for example, with horned helmets, these uh, ceremonial axes, some uh, dancing figures, perhaps, and horse heads stems in both ends of the boat. And this is a helmet. In fact, it must be a mask, a double mask. These are the horns from bull. And this is not easily to see, but it's a bird bike, two eyes, a lot of cup marks, and on the basement, a boat with sun horse stems and the lure music to the ceremonials were probably also important. Two years ago, a sensation was excavated in Denmark, breaking news, it was really breaking news. An axe and two horse figures were found a sensation. We know the figures from the carvings on the stone and metal. For example, on this razor, we have the boat with uh, horse head stems and two men with horned helmet and axes. This is the find axes and horse heads. This is another very well known uh, boat with two uh, horn, hel horned uh, men, dancing figures uh, in the boat, and so on. The rock carvings shows the rituals as a photo carved in stone. You see men with horned helmets holding the cult axes in a boat where the stems are equipped with horse heads. It is, must be the very oldest photo, so to say, of this uh, ceremonial situation. And then one of the most important icons in the Nordic Bronx Age, the sun horse. This plastic uh, was found 3,600 years ago in Denmark, showing a horse and a disc, a golden side and a back side, which is dark day side, night side. The direction of this uh, journey is from left to right. And it was a kind of explanation how the sun moved. If you imagine you are standing in Scandinavia and looking to the south, you can see that the sun rise is to the left in east and sunset to the right and west. This gives good, good meaning with the direction. The ornamentation of the date on the disc and on the horse is uh, very, very beautiful and very well carved, so to say. It probably also has a meaning, but uh, we don't know. 
this popular icon, you can find it uh, on the rocks, on metal, and it is a very important and uh, uh, well-known symbol. Therefore, you can also find it in chocolate industry and on Danish thousand kroners note. This is uh, the horse on a uh, rock not far away from the museum, and we have chosen it as logo type, showing the horse with two legs, plate a tail, the line, and the disc. And notice it is moving in the same direction from left to right, from east to west. One of the masterpieces in Tarnum World Heritage. The major part of the iconography, iconography of the rock images can be directly related to the objects found in the same periods. And thus the two can mutually supply information. The archeological object helps decoding the rock images and gives information about the function of the object. In this case, the lure. Excavations in connection to uh, rock art panels. Excavations is a quite new discipline. It clearly shows that the images were not only a part of activities connected to the site. The excavations here shows uh, a row of 18 post holes. We believe it could be a kind of fence between the holy area and pagan area, uh, uh, area where different activities were going on. For example, foot food uh, making. We found a lot of fire pits with bones from uh, oxen, pig and horse. There was uh, stone packings in pavements. And the rock carvings are, of course, on the rock here. The interesting thing is also that the odd the uh, rock carving, the rock carvings are uh, only about 1700 years old, except from the cup marks, of course. But the activities around this perhaps holy little mountain was 3000 from 3000 BC to 480, uh, that means between three and four thousand years. So it has been a very important place during many, many generations. We have the same situation in uh, Valcamonica. This is uh, Cabo di Ponte, Cemo uh, at Cabo di Ponte. They have made excavations many years uh, earlier than we have in Scandinavia. And it looks like it's almost the same uh, uh, muster. Two boulders with beautiful carvings. And until now, they have found 24 of these stele with beautiful uh, images also. And what could be interesting is this wall of stone a defense a border between the holy and the pagan area of course we don't know but uh, uh, it uh, could be a realistic theory also when we are thinking of the churches where we also have two areas one for the public and one for the priests Europe has had economic and political connections over thousands of years. Contacts were established, deals were made, 
and the countless finds are the silent witness of a vivid exchange, not only of goods, but also of ideas and symbols, a time of extensive communication. The picture tradition alive for at least 4,000 years and existing at a time of extensive communication might in fact point out that a European Union has effectively existed for about 6,000 years. This is a small collection of the Bronx artifacts found in Scandinavia, primarily in Denmark, which has the largest collection uh, in Europe. Here we see the corned helmets, ceremonial axes, razors, different kinds, the sun chariot, lures, and so on. And just to give you an idea, we have excavated almost 3,000 swords in Denmark, each about one kilo. That means three ton metal, copper and tin. But we don't have met metal uh, in Scandinavia. They, we have, but uh, they didn't know about it. So every uh, single kilo has to be imported. The European ore deposit shows matching ore to the findings we have in Scandinavia. In the beginning, it was uh, in the Mediterranean area, later on in the Alps and so on. The question is, how did they pay for all this metal? We know amber was a very important material, which only could be found in the North Sea and Baltic Sea, southern of Scandinavia. And Baltic amber in the matching ore districts uh, shows us that it could be uh, perhaps the most important payment. The supply of copper and tin to southern Scandinavia increased significantly around 1600 BC. And after this date started rock art motifs to appear, which depicts metals and equipment communicating personal status and non-domestic cosmopolitan features first weapons, oxide ingots, chariots, and representations of the sun. The left picture is an polestar found in Sweden, but produced in Spain. And the right picture is uh, found in uh, Sweden and produced in, in melted, so to say, in Sweden. And the, this picture shows a uh, rock carving with this axe and can be dated to about 1600 BC. And this picture is from the fossil panel, which we saw uh, some minutes ago. So therefore, this picture, picture could tell a story about trading and traveling uh, in, uh, Europe, in Europe at that time, cargo in transport during 4,000 years. This is a rock carving, a boat, and this is a modern ship still transporting materials all over Europe. And um, th this is very uh, Fascinating to small beads of glass and amber has been found in Denmark, about 270 pieces. Uh, and tells a story of long distance exchange during the Bronze Age connected, connecting e Egypt and Mesopotamia with South Scandinavia. The material and the color of the glass beads and of the amber 
beads may entail a deeper meaning related to Bronze Age religion and cosmology. This grave is from uh, south of Copenhagen in Denmark with this blue uh, beads and also amber and other materials. The blue beads is the same glass as, for example, the blue glass on the mask of Tudak Amon. And both the beads and this glass is produced in Mesopotamia for about 3,500 years ago and transported also to Copenhagen, so to say. There's another fascinating example. This is a, a chair, we could call it, found in a pyramid in Egypt. And this is found in a grave in Denmark, but produced in Egypt. And this is another amazing thing. Natural science is the base of giving us a lot of information. This spoke coffin is the, of a, uh, from a girl, the Exeway girl. She was body, bur buried in Denmark, uh, 1400 before Christ, so to say. And using strontium analyze, it could tell us that she traveled long distances in her short life. The Equa girl is thus directly linked to the trade and alliance networks what existed across Europe and the Middle East in the Bronze Age. She, she traveled two times from Denmark to probably Southern Europe within her two last years where she lived. So it was possible to travel over long distances. We didn't know that, uh, but now it's for sure. We are documenting uh, the rock art in uh, the World Heritage in Sweden. There are about 600 panels. The biggest one is uh, over 200 square meters, meters with uh, several hundred images. And uh, we are using rubbing photogrammetry structure from motion and laser scanning. And uh, this is a night photography, this is a rubbing, and this is a painted, painted uh, version of the same. And the same here, night photography, rubbing, and structure from motion. And another example here, the laser scanning, which is quite easily done, and the rubbing, and here's the result of the scanning and of the rubbing, and you can compare it and see many, many details in uh, both results. Collaboration within the World Heritage Area. As I have mentioned, there are about 600 places in the World Heritage Area, which is about 40 square kilometers. About 15 of the the masterpieces of the panels are painted with red. The rest uh, uh, is, uh, yeah, situated uh, all over the landscape, but it's possible to, to reach them and to visit them all. At the places, there are informations of different kinds, here shown with rubbings, it is a panel which is not painted. And this is another panel connected to what we know about the research from this period. And this is a site prepared for the public. It's not allowed to walk on the panels, of course, 
This is from Tron in Sweden. And this is from Nakwane Park, Valcamonica in Italy. And it's a very old construction. They have had, a, would I say, better um, management for many, many years than we have in Sweden. And on the right side, uh, we have talked about uh, the painted panels. And the discussion is ongoing. In Norway, they have taken the consequence, one of the panels here painted with red. Here is the paint removed. And now it's illuminated with sun energy. That could be a, a very good solution, so to say, but very expensive. And always remember, we in Scandinavia, we have about 30 thousand panels smaller and bigger of course some are more important than others but who should decide that thank you for looking and a toast wishing you a healthy great and better new year goodbye <laughs>